Welcome to our weekly Bible study. This evening we're studying the scriptures for the fourth Sunday of Lent in year B. Before we begin, though, we'll begin with the prayer that we have on page 48. We use as a resource this, this book, At Home with the Word, 2021. We'll begin with the prayer on page 48. <clears throat> to Abraham and Sarah you called out, O God of mystery, inviting them to journey to a land of promise. To us also you call out, inviting us to pass through Lent to Easter's glory. Open our ears, therefore, to listen to Jesus, the beloved Son, in whom you are well pleased, so that, embracing the mystery of the cross, we may come to the holy mountain to immortal life and share in Christ's transfigured glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. It's exciting that this evening we are dividing ourselves into various ministries so that some of the members of our Bible study this evening are praying with Pauline Davila and her family at Mission Funeral Home in South Austin as we celebrate the life and legacy of Gilbert who passed away the week before last. And then for those of us who are here on Facebook, we'll continue with our Bible study as well, knowing that those who are with Gilbert's family in prayer tonight may be able to tune in later in addition to those who are joining us through Facebook this evening. Shall we take a look at this weekend's, this Sunday's readings? This is the fourth Sunday of Lent we know that there are, the church has this, a three-year cycle of readings. We have what the church calls year A, year B, and year C. This year we're currently in year B. What's the difference? During year A, we read from the Gospel of Matthew. During year B, we read from the Gospel of Mark. During year C, we read from the Gospel of Luke. We know that there are four Gospels, four stories of Jesus in the Bible. There are the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all have their own years. We refer to them as year A, year B, and year C. We're currently in year B. And then we hear from John during the Easter season of all three years. So... We are currently in the year of Mark, but interestingly, during the year of Mark, there are different Sundays when we actually skip to John. Mark is the shortest of the four Gospels, and so as a result, we find ourselves during this year of Mark supplementing our Sunday readings with readings from John. We'll see this even during ordinary time, during summer ordinary time, We'll find ourselves taking a break from Mark because it's such a short gospel and supplementing it with various gospel passages from John, namely John's bread of life discourse of Jesus telling his disciples how it is that he is the bread of life. So on this fourth Sunday of Lent in year B, which is the year of Mark, we actually have our gospel from John tonight. Our first reading comes from a book that we don't hear much about, and that is the second book of Chronicles. There are, very, there are various history books in the scriptures. One of them is First and Second Chronicles, which is an attempt of the scribal class to chronicle the history of Israel at that time. Are we ready to take a look at today's, excuse me, at Sunday's first reading? which comes to us from the second book of Chronicles. We'll begin with the first paragraph. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. So what do we see so far? Interestingly, we're already setting up the story. 
We know that at that time already there was the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. Recall the geography of the Middle East at that time. Jerusalem is located in the south. Jesus is from Galilee in the north which after the time of David and his son Solomon became two separate kingdoms. David was a king of the United Kingdom, we might say, after his descendants had split the land into various kingdoms. Suddenly there was the Northern Kingdom of Israel and the Southern Kingdom of Judea. So where do the, the happenings of Sunday's first reading take place? In the North? or in the south. We know that it's in the south. There are two indications of that. In the reading it says that all the princes of Judah, where is Judah? In the south. And it also talks about the temple, the Lord's temple, which was consecrated where? In Jerusalem. Where is Jerusalem? Jerusalem is in Judah. It's in the south, near what today is the Dead Sea. So we're setting it up with the story of those who are in Judah, namely of the princes and the priests and the people, adding infidelity to infidelity, or in plain English, they're being unfaithful to the Lord. What we see in the scriptures, in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, is this history of how it is that people are unfaithful, turning their backs on God, forgetting God's law, but God continues to be faithful and loving and compassionate. So the people added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all types of abominations and polluting the Lord's temple. Are we ready to continue? Early and often did the Lord, the God of their ancestors, send messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets until the anger of the Lord rose against his people and was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Let's simply pause there. God sent various messengers The, we talked about there being four Gospels, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The fancy word that we have for that is the Gospels, but the adjective in English, anything that deals with the Gospel is evangelical. That's the word that we use. Evangelical comes from a root. You see the word angel in that word? An angel is a messenger. It carries an angel carries a message from God to God's people. In fact, what type of message is it? In Greek, we'll get rid of the parentheses here. In Greek, the, the prefix EU in English means good. So the good message is the gospel. And the messengers, at various places in Scripture, we see various messengers. Some of those messengers are of divine origin, like we'll split them into angels, that the Lord sends angels. According to the ancient cosmology, there are human beings who are of this world, and God and other spiritual beings being of other worlds. So God sent some of these other spiritual beings. It makes for an interesting story because can you see a spirit, a spirit being spiritual? There's nothing corporeal, nothing physical about angels or spirits. So how interesting that we have stories told by our ancient ancestors. We go back to the analogy of Grandpa Rudy sitting around the campfire telling stories. He would tell stories about how it was that God sent various messengers, including these spiritual beings that today we often refer to as angels. Interestingly, there's nothing in science that proves or disproves the existence of angels, but they do exist as part of Grandpa Rudy's 
story. Some of the other messengers mentioned by, by Sunday's first reading then are the prophets. God sent various spiritual beings throughout the history of God's people, but God also sent various prophets. We recall that the word prophet, we've spelled that out before, prophenine is a Greek word meaning to speak through a mask. In the ancient world, when the Greeks who invented theater, who invented drama and comedy, when they got on stage and put on a mask, they had a word for the acting that they were doing. They called it speaking through a mask. I'm mean, going to go on stage and speak through a mask. That word prophenine is where we get our word prophet, because the prophets are like masks through which God speaks. When the prophet speaks, who is speaking? Is the prophet speaking? When the prophet speaks, it's actually God who is speaking through the prophet. If I put on a mask, it's I who am speaking through the mask, in the same way God speaks through God's prophets to the people. So God is sending these prophets to warn the people who are heaping infidelity on infidelity, who are turning their backs on God. It's the role of the prophets then who came and invited people to turn again toward God. But Sunday's first reading tells us that the anger of the Lord was so inflamed that there was no remedy. What happens? Shall we continue the story? Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and of his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. So this was an ancient way for the people of that time to explain what happened with an event that we now refer to as the Babylonian captivity, or the exile. The Babylonian captivity, or the exile, we'll put exile in parentheses, was when we were deported from our homeland, many miles away, I'm thinking it's some 600 miles away from here to what today is San Luis Potosí, from Austin to San Luis Potosí, they were on a forced march from their land in Judah, in the Holy Land, to Babylon. That deportation began in 597 before Christ, so roughly 600 years before Christ's birth, we were exiled, and we were allowed back into our homeland in 538 BC. Is anyone able to help us with the math? How many years? Were we living in exile? Were we in Babylon among foreigners, living as a foreign nation? Seems that that would be 59 years. 59 years in which we were in captivity. The one who wrote Sunday's first reading, their math was off a bit. They used the symbolic number of 70. We recall that the number seven and the number 70 are symbolic numbers. Speaking of the Lord's Sabbath, the day of rest, how it is that for the people's failing to keep the Sabbath every seven days, the Lord would deport them from their homeland for 70 years. The math was off slightly, historians say, but we get this idea of the ancient people trying to explain to their children and grandchildren why it was that they had to leave their homes during this event when they were conquered by the Chaldeans. As Sunday's first reading suggests, it was the Persians who allowed them to go back to their homeland. Why is this 
Babylonian captivity important for us today? Because we know that during this time, when we were in captivity, in exile, among these foreign people, we heard their stories, and we took their stories and started making them their own, excuse me, our own. When we heard their story of how the world was created, it inspired us to tell a similar story of how the world was created. When we heard their story of a universal flood, that story come to a, comes to us from Babylon, we heard it when we were in exile. Then suddenly we started telling that story around the campfire as well, making it our own story. They told this story as the epic of Gilgamesh. Do you remember that from a few weeks ago? We now tell that story as the story of Noah and the ark. If you go back to the analogy of Grandpa Rudy sitting around the campfire telling stories, he heard this fabulous story of universal flood, which occurred to Gilgamesh, according to the story that we heard in Babylon. Grandpa Rudy took that and used that story because his kids and grandkids were hearing that story as well. He recast the story of Gilgamesh in the terms of, of a story about God and God's faithfulness as expressed to Noah and Noah's family through the rainbow. We'll come back to that later tonight in our Theological Institute when we start unpacking the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. We're ready to continue the story and see what happens with the Persians letting the Israelites go back to their homeland in 538. Sunday's first reading continues. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here we have a story of how it is that Grandpa Rudy and others who were telling the story at that time explained how it was that we went into captivity, we were deported from our homeland in 597 because we were unfaithful to God. But then how it was that God worked through King Cyrus, the king of the Persians, to allow us in 538 to go back to our homes and to rebuild the temple, which was destroyed during the wars that led to our captivity. There were actually various wars that were fought at that time, and there were various, uh, there were various deportations, so it sort of happened in cycles. This was the first one in 597. The temple was actually destroyed during the second deportation, which occurred some 10 years later. We'll pause there to allow the first reading to soak in on for Sunday. So on Sunday, the, the second book of Chronicles gives us this history of how it was that we were unfaithful to God, we turned our backs on God. As a result, God sent us packing into exile in Babylon as part of what we call the Babylonian captivity or the exile where we were for 59 years before King Cyrus of Persia allowed us to come back to our homeland and seeing it through the lenses of faith when Grandpa Rudy told the story he talked about how it was that God spoke through Cyrus and moved Cyrus to do what Cyrus did allowing us to come back to our homes The theme of the captivity continues in Sunday's responsorial psalm. So we take a look at it together, Psalm 137. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept. What event are you referring to? By the streams of Babylon, where were we? We were deported. We sat by the streams of Babylon and wept. When we remembered Zion, 
On the aspens there we hung up our harps. As we thought of our homeland, Zion, Jerusalem, Judah, we were sad. We hung up our harps on the aspens, or the willows there on the trees. We hung up our harps, why? We were sad. We were not in the mood for singing joyful songs to the Lord. We hung up our harps, and we sat by the stream and wept. Where? In Babylon. When? During the Babylon, Babylonian captivity. Our responsorial song continues. For there, our captors, remember, they took us into exile. We were now captive. Our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs. They asked us to sing and be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Sunday's responsorial song continues. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? We were exiled, deported from our own land. If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand wither, may my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Yikes. If I, like my ancestors, am unfaithful, May I be somehow punished, the psalmist says, if I'm unfaithful to God, may my right hand wither, or, as we used to joke in the seminary, may my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. May my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. That's Sunday's responsorial psalm, Psalm 137. Ready for Sunday's second reading? Where does Sunday's second reading come to us from? From the letter to the Ephesians. Who wrote the letter to the Ephesians? Paul? Actually, Paul didn't write the letter to the Ephesians, which is why we refer to it as a pseudonymous letter. Pseudonymous, meaning it has a false pseudo name. And the false name that was given it is Paul. St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We now know that it's synonymous, that St. Paul did not write the letter to the Ephesians. There are other letters in the New Testament that were credited to Paul as well that were written in Paul's name and in Paul's spirit, but Paul didn't write them. One is Ephesians. Others include Colossians, not written by Paul, but written in his name and in his spirit. Hebrews, not written by Paul, but written in his name and in his spirit. Second, Thessalonians. Even though Paul wrote the first letter to the Thessalonians, he did not write the second letter to the Thessalonians. Others include first and second Timothy, not written by Paul. And Paul's letter to Titus, again, a synonymous word, Paul did not write a letter to Titus, but someone did write these letters in Paul's name and in Paul's spirit. So that, the letter to the Ephesians is being written to whom? To the people in Ephesus. Where is Ephesus in modern day Turkey? So Paul, who was from Turkey, Saul of Tarsus in modern day Turkey, Turkey is writing to another Christian community in Turkey. At that time, Paul traveled between Turkey and Greece, and it was often him writing to communities in modern-day Turkey and modern-day Greece. The communities in Greece, in Greece, for instance, included the Corinthians and the Philippians of Philippi. I may be mistaken on that. That could be in modern-day Turkey as well. But Paul was on his way to Rome, where Paul would later be crucified. So today's, excuse me, Sunday's reading from the letter to the Ephesians, then, is a pseudonymous work. We don't know who wrote it, but someone wrote it in Paul's name and in Paul's spirit to the church of Ephesus. Are we ready for the second reading? As we listen to the second reading, let's see how it relates back to the first reading. We always want to try to look for the thread that runs through the scriptures on any given Sunday. The letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, 
because of the great love God had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. Let's just pause there. Even though we have been unfaithful, like our ancestors who were deported from our homeland and taken into exile, into the Babylonian captivity, even though we have sinned and are dead because of our transgressions, Paul tells us that God, excuse me, not Paul, but the one writing in Paul's name, tells us that God is rich in mercy and that God saves us through grace. Who saves us? God saves us. Is there anything that we do to save ourselves? Not according to the letter to the Ephesians. God saves us through grace. Various persons like Karl Rahner, perhaps one of the, well, certainly one of the greatest Roman Catholic theologians of the 20th century, perhaps even the greatest, said that grace is simply another word for the Holy Spirit. God saves us through grace, through God's Spirit. We continue. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Christ in the heavens that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you, it is a gift from God. It is not from works, so no one may boast, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How are we saved? According to the letter to the Ephesians, we are saved through grace. Did you catch the line that's in here, which is often cited by our non-Catholic Christian brothers and sisters, our Protestant brothers and sisters? The line is, it is not from works that we are saved. But it is through grace that you have been saved through faith. So we have this story in the letter to Ephesians, how it is that we are saved through grace and faith and not through works. What's the difference? Faith, what we believe. Grace, God working. We're, we're saved by God working in our lives and in the lives of those around us and through our own faith. We are not saved through works, through anything that we do ourselves. We cannot save ourselves. It is God who saves. That's a very Protestant or non-Catholic theology that we hear in Sunday's letter to the Ephesians. We are saved through grace, grace by faith, and we are not saved by works, by the things that we do. We're not saved by going to church. We're not saved by praying the rosary. We're not saved by doing good things for others. We're saved by faith through God's grace. We know, of course, that to balance this perspective that we see in the letter to the Ephesians, there are other scriptural references that point more to works like the 25th chapter of Matthew when the goats and the sheep are in front of Jesus and God divides them as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats what's the difference between those on God's right hand and those on God's left hand interestingly the Latin word for left is sinister that's the word for left my left hand is my sinister hand. What's the difference between good people and sinister people? According to Matthew 25, when you fed the hungry, when you clothed the naked, when you gave drink to the, to the thirsty, when you visited the imprisoned, when you cared for the ill, you did that for me. What saves those people? What they did for others, their works. Later, the letter of James, we talk about how it is that we're saved by our works as well. So the Catholic position has tended not to be that we're not saved by works. 
The Catholic tradition, the Catholic response, has typically been that we're saved by faith and works. So it's not one or the other. As Catholics, we're saved by faith and works. By what we believe and by what we do. Matthew chapter 25. God separates the sheep from the goats. How does God separate them? Based on what they did or did not do. Are we ready for the gospel? We've already said that Sunday's gospel comes to us from the gospel of John, which is the fourth gospel. We know that we're in the middle of year B, which is the year of Mark. We know that Mark was the first gospel to be written. So Mark was first, that became Matthew and Luke. John is the last gospel, which means that John is able to benefit from many years of hearing these stories being passed down and is able to refine his story quite a bit. For that reason, we often say that John has a higher Christology, a higher view of Jesus, a view of Jesus being more like God. So Sunday's Gospel comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. If we look on the synopsis that we've had, that we've shared in the past, John chapter 3, where do we find that? Do we find that in any of the other Gospels? We don't. Sunday's story of Jesus and Nicodemus is not found in Matthew or Mark or Luke. It's not a story that comes from any of these. It's a story that John created. So let, let's listen to this story and hear why it is that John would have told this story of Jesus and Nicodemus, a story that was not told by Matthew or Mark or Luke. Why did John tell this story? Ready for the gospel? This is John chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Let's unpack that. Who are the characters of this story? Jesus. And Jesus is speaking with whom? With Nicodemus. Jesus is speaking with an, an older man of, uh, of, the, of the Jewish religion whose name was Nicodemus, and he's using a story about how it is that Moses lifted up a serpent in the desert. Have you heard that story before? It actually comes to us from the book of Numbers. Where are we going to find the, the book of Numbers in the Bible? Numbers? That's from the first five books of the Bible. Do you remember the first five books of the Bible? First five books of the Bible, remember, I think, a Notre Dame hair product, Gel ND. What does that acronym stand for? Gel ND? G. The first book of the Bible is G, Genesis. Second book is E, Exodus. Third book is L, Leviticus. Fourth book is Numbers. Fifth book is Deuteronomy. We'll come back to that. So the fourth book, Numbers, is where we're going to find this story of Moses lifting up a serpent in the desert. Shall we turn to Numbers chapter 21? If we're using the Red Bibles that we have in our gift shop, that's on page 154. Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. From Mount Hor, Moses and the Israelites set out by the way, by way to the Red Sea to go around to the land of Edom. But when the people became impatient on the way, they spoke against God and against Moses, saying, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. The people are complaining against, against God and against Moses. What happens? Verse 6. This is Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. That was their equivalent of the pandemic. They grumbled against God. God sent poisonous serpents who bit many of the people, and the people died. Verse 7. 
the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the servants from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten and shall look at it will live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze, put it on a pole, and whoever saw the serpent and was bitten by a serpent and saw the bronze serpent, that person lived. Have you heard that story before? That's from the book of Numbers, the fourth book of the Bible, the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 to 9. Numbers 21, 4 to 9. A story of the people complaining against God, God sending poisonous serpents, serpents biting people and them dying. But when they came to Moses, God said, take a bronze serpent, put it on a staff, on a pole, and anyone who sees the bronze serpent will live. Have you seen the symbol for doctors and for medicine? What is it a symbol of? Of a pole with snakes. Snakes were an ancient symbol of healing. Yes, a symbol of death because of the poisonous snakes that there are, but also a symbol of life and of healing. So when Moses raised up the bronze serpent, anyone who had been bitten and looked on it was saved. They, were li they lived. Why would John have a story of Jesus telling Nicodemus, about this story from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 to 9, of Moses lifting up the serpent. Because according to this story, John has Jesus saying, in the same way that Moses lifted up a serpent in the desert and people lived, so too will the Son of Man be lifted up. And as a result, the people will live, will be saved. In the same way that Moses lifted up a bronze serpent in the desert, the Son of Man will be lifted up. John, of course, lived many decades after the crucifixion of Christ. So John put into Jesus' mouth, we often refer to him as the Johannine Jesus' mouth. The Johannine Jesus talks about his own crucifixion. Of course, John wrote many years afterwards, so he was putting these words into Jesus' mouth about how Jesus needed to be lifted up in the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert. Why was that necessary? Again, think back to previous weeks. If anyone died on the cross, it, be, it was because of their sins, it was because of their transgressions. Cursed is the one who hangs on a tree. Jesus by dying on the cross, according to the Jews, seemed cursed. So John had to have a story of the Johannine Jesus talking about how it was that he would not be cursed by dying on the cross. Instead, it would be in the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert and people lived, he would be lifted up and the people would live and have life as a result of his death. How's that for a theology. Are you ready to continue? We come now to John chapter 3, verse 15. Ooh, maybe we've seen signs at sports, at, at football games or baseball games that say John 3.15. Ready to read John 3.15 to know what they're holding up on their signs? For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. Do you see the thread that ties back to what we have here in the second reading, the letter to the Ephesians? We're saved through faith. What does the Johannine Jesus tell us in the Gospel of John? That the Son of Man will be lifted up, and that all who believe in the Son of God, if you believe, if you have faith, you will be saved. When someone holds up a sign in a football or a baseball game saying John 3.15, what are they saying? They're saying, if you believe in Jesus, in Christ, 
you will be saved. It's their way of evangelizing, of encouraging others to believe in Jesus. John 3.15, God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son so that all who, might, who believe in God and in Christ will not perish but will have eternal life. We continue. John 3.16, For God did not send God's Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes... in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned. Because the one who has not believed in the name of our only Son, of the, the, the only Son of God, and this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness because their works were evil. Again, tying back, people preferred darkness, their works were evil, ties back to the first reading. Why were we exiled? Why were we deported from our homeland? Because of our sins, our infidelity. John continues, For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his or her works may be clearly seen as done in God. Here we see us falling back on the ancient dichotomy. What's a dichotomy? In the ancient world, we started dividing things into two parts. We started putting things into one of two buckets, right? Either something is good or it's bad. It's right or it's wrong. It's light or it's darkness. So John is saying, those who are good, it's like living in the light. There's nothing to hide. Those who are bad, it's like living in the darkness. There are all sorts of things that we want to hide about ourselves that we've done or that we've said. Oh. So Sunday's scriptures then weave this thread of how it is that we have been unfaithful to God. Our ancestors were unfaithful to God and were deported, but how it is that God, showing God's love and mercy, brought us back to God. How it is in the letter to the Ephesians, how it is that we are saved through grace and faith, not by works, but through our grace and our faith. And Jesus, the Joanine Jesus, the Jesus in the Gospel of John, the Joanine Jesus tells us how it is that those who believe in the Son of God will come to life, will be saved. In the same way that Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, which healed the people, they lived as a result of that bronze serpent. When the Son of God is lifted up, all who believe will come to life. That's Sunday's scriptures. We'll pause and give those words a moment to sink in. Are we ready to transition to our rosary for the evening? As a faith community, we are so extremely pleased to have Father Roy's rosary we were making them available last Sunday at the church. Father Roy's rosary is taking the scriptural rosary that we've prayed here at Holy Family for some four years now, and it's simply publishing in book form so that we can help to spread word and encourage others to pray the rosary with us. We are in the middle of Lent, and Lent is a traditional time of reflecting on Christ's suffering. And so tonight, we'll pray together the sorrowful mysteries, which are found on page... 32. On page 32, we have the Sorrowful Mysteries. We'll give you a moment to grab your rosaries there. Page 32, we have the Sorrowful Mysteries that we'll pray together this evening. If you'd like to pray for anything in particular this evening, feel free to write a comment below our Facebook posting here. I'll pull up the uh, page so that you can be able to pray for any special intentions that we have this evening. In a special way tonight, it is 7 o'clock, and so at Mission Serenity Funeral Home, 
We are praying as well for Gilbert and his family. So please join us in praying for Gilbert Davila and his family. Give us one moment and we'll be ready for the rosary. If you have any intentions, then feel free to write them into the comments. We're praying the rosary tonight in a special way for the Davila family, both at Mission Funeral Home and also here at Holy Family. Tonight we pray the sorrowful mysteries of the cross. If you're following along in Father Roy's Rosary, it begins on page 32. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray for an increase in the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My hope comes from God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The first sorrowful mystery, the agony in the garden. On the night before he died, Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. As we pray this mystery, we'll join in praying. Uh, Shirley Bruck asks us to pray for all who are suffering depression, which is real during this pandemic. When we are physically distancing ourselves from other people, it's easy for us to find ourselves mentally in different spaces. So in a special way tonight, let's pray for Gilbert and his family as they mourn his loss and celebrate his, his life, but also for all who are struggling 
during this pandemic, who've lost their lives during this pandemic, who've lost their health during this pandemic, or who are suffering emotionally, or who are suffering from such realities as depression. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Greatly distressed and troubled, Jesus fell on the ground and prayed. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus prayed, If it is possible, let this cup of suffering pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Finding the disciples asleep, he asked Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. A second time, Jesus went and prayed, If this cup will not pass until I drink from it, may your will be done. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Finding the disciples sleeping again, Jesus went and prayed a third time. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus came to his disciples and said, Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of God will be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. While Jesus was speaking, Judas came with a great crowd sent by the chief priests and the elders of the people, carrying swords and clubs. After Judas kissed him, they seized Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. Stripped of his garments, Jesus was lashed and whipped. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The disciples fled. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Those who had seized Jesus led him to the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Peter denied Jesus for a third time, saying, I swear I do not know the man. Immediately the cock crowed. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Those who held Jesus mocked him and beat him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They blindfolded him, slapped him, and jeered, Who struck you, prophet? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said, I will destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. The high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They bound Jesus and led him away to Pilate, the governor. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pilate sent Jesus to Herod, whose soldiers mocked him and treated him with contempt. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate sent Jesus to be scourged. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The prophet Isaiah said, He has taken upon himself our suffering and carried our sorrows. Beaten and punished, he was wounded for our rebellious acts and crushed for our sins, and by his wounds we are healed. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns. Jesus was mocked by the soldiers who placed on his head a crown of thorns. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. They stripped Jesus of his clothes. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They clothed Jesus in a purple robe, and they created a crown of thorns that they put on his head. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They placed the reed in his hand and knelt before him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They spat upon him, and, taking the reed from his hand, struck him on the head. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to the people, Behold the man. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pilate said to the people, Behold your king. The people cried out, Away with him. Crucify him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pilate asked, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They mocked him, stripped him of the robe, and put his clothes on him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever will be, a world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, the carrying of the cross. Jesus was forced to carry the instrument of his execution. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Seeing that he was gaining nothing, Pilate washed his hands and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The people responded, May his blood be on us and on our children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pilate handed Jesus over to the people to be crucified. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They led Jesus out to crucify him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They seized the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, and compelled him to carry the cross behind Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. A great multitude of people followed him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The women wailed and lamented him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said to them, Do not weep for me, daughters of Jerusalem, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus said, If they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when the wood is dry? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Two criminals were led away to be put to death with him. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion of the Lord. I'd like to dedicate this mystery of the rosary to all the people I've had the joy of serving during these 20 years of priesthood. I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary of being a priest today. Many, many fond memories of many people over 20 years of Sundays and throughout the week of celebrating the sacraments, so many baptisms and so many Eucharists and so many marriages and sacraments celebrated together. I thank God for all of you and I pray for you this fifth mystery in a special way. Jesus was nailed to the cross and died after three hours of agony. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. They brought Jesus to the place of the skull, where they offered him wine mixed with gall. Jesus tasted it, but would not drink it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. They placed Pilate's inscription on the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, and Mary Magdalene. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The people mocked him, saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. One of the criminals railed at Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other rebuked him and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The sun's light faded, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The centurion and those watching over Jesus felt an earthquake and were filled with awe. They said, Truly this was the Son of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To these do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. And may the soul of Gilbert and the souls of all the faithful that departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We want to thank you all for joining us for this praying of the rosary together. Let's continue to lift up Pauline Davila and her family. 
her kids and grandkids and great-grandkids as they celebrate Gilbert's life and legacy tomorrow and as we gather to pray with them this evening at the Mission Funeral Home. We'll take a five-minute break and we'll be back for our Theological Institute. Let's take a break. <laughs> 